Speaking of DT, Dennis, would you step forward, please? Do you know what? You, I, I said in, in commentary, you've carried on entertaining us, even though you didn't win the match. It, it was played in a wonderful spirit. And I was so pleased for Barry. It's the first time we played. I mean, I broke off. It wasn't a bad break off shot, uh, but it just shows the class of the man. He's still on the, or just fallen off the main tour, but I think he'll get back on again. A great asset to the seniors and to knock a long red in and make 60 odd was fantastic. Had a chance in the second, but then he's made a 70 in the third. I had a chance again, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. And I had a good look around the crucible because uh, that's me. 20 years ago, I retired from the main tour. Didn't play for 10 years. Then Jason Francis came along with the legends. I took over from Alex Higgins and Jimmy White, myself, Cliff Thorpe and John Parrott, along with JV, traveled the length and breadth of the country for years playing legend snooker. And it was Jason that got me to pick the queue up after 10 years. And then he got the seniors going. So I wanted to carry on playing in the seniors. But that um, match against Barry is my last competitive match ever. And what a way to finish here in the Crucible Theatre. I've enjoyed every minute of the, the seniors tour. The standards getting so high, they've proven that. Uh, there's no way I can compete with these youngsters nowadays. So I'm still going to keep involved with the seniors tour. And uh, I'll do the commentary with John Virgo. I'll still love it, but the old cues definitely getting away. Uh, I will play exhibitions. I've got shows with Steve Davis to do and, and, J and JV. We'll be touring the country, playing in theatres. But my competitive days are now over, Rob. Well, that, that is a huge moment for snooker, a sport to which you have dedicated your life. And we will still, of course, get to hear your dulcet tones and get to see you on, on various BBC events. But that must have been such a strange experience for you then you, you you still had a smile on your face there was still the banter but if you went out knowing that was to be the final time you you, you must have been so full of emotion well i was and i was pleased that barry knocked a few big break-ins because i was going to miss when I, I got it i just found it so tough there and i haven't been able to put the practice in and if you don't put three or four hours practice in a day you've got no chance against these players that are just turned 40 and playing to such a high standard um, so yeah I knew it was uh, time to hang the old queue up and as I say I've loved every minute of it and what a way to go out in the crucible theatre with one table doesn't get any better than that Rob uh, we, we could talk for hours but but if I may I, I, I've heard you give great interviews in the past about walking past the workmen's club and seeing the bright green and seeing the coloured balls and then you were allowed in and then you replaced the balls and then you played with a crate and, and everything else that follows. Do you ever stop and think what, you know, how would you have filled your life if it hadn't been for snooker? You, you've served the sport so well and the sport has served you. It's, could you ever have believed that, that you would have seen so much and met so many great people and experienced so many amazing things? Well, as you say, back in Coal Island and Gervin's Club, I just happened to see the door open, looked in, balls whizzing around, fascinated me. I remember watching on a little black and white television on Grandstand when Joe Davis was playing, Jackie Ray, the Irish player, was playing. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I'd play snooker as a professional, and never in my wildest dreams did I think I would lift the World Championship trophy. Uh, so I've had a great run in the game of snooker, turned pro the year after Alex Higgins, same year as my good friend Cliff Thorburn. We've remained buddies ever since. And it's still great to see all these new players coming in the game. And we've seen the Stephen Hendrys come in and Jimmy White's come in. I I've had a, a blessed life. I've been so lucky to have been involved in this great game. And to see where it's going now is absolutely fantastic. And the World Championship this year, Mark Selby and Sean Murphy, two fantastic ambassadors. And the game is just going to go from strength to strength as long as we've got players like that around. Dennis, you speak with such eloquence, which is why you've been as accomplished as a broadcaster as you have been as a player. We had an inkling that this news might be coming and we thought it would be remiss of us not to have an opportunity. Would you please turn your attention to that screen there as we just take a moment to enjoy 85, the climactic moments once again.
Taylor, for the first time, becomes the world snooker champion, 1985. He is so thrilled. And a sad champion, Steve Davis, looks on. The whole place here at the Crucible erupting for this very popular Irishman. He is so happy. Two major titles this season and also the Irish Championship. A fabulous picture of a very happy and popular man. So much emotion for, uh, for all of us uh, who've, who've had our lives working in sport. Following on from you, uh, we have one more task for you, if you wouldn't mind. Apologies for the emotion. Would you step forward to the table? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Dennis, would you, would you step forward to the table and, uh, and kiss the silver lady one last time? One last kiss. The curtain comes down on a glittering career. The seniors will be back at seven o'clock. We leave you with Dennis Taylor and the trophy he raised so magnificently in 1985.